pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with uh, my version of a tag that Britta Bowler concocted the other day, but she didn't call it a tag, but everybody who's done it, and it's been spreading like wildfire throughout Booktube since, has referred to it as a tag. It's a tag, Britta. It's a wonderful tag, which is why it's spreading like wildfire. Strange bookish facts. And I have had fun uh, trying to limit mine to 10. And I am delighted to be here. And tonight I'm not drinking wine, at least not yet. I'm starting off the evening with some Japanese Nihonshu, or sake, as you guys all know it is. And because it doesn't need to be kept cold, I got the bottle right here beside me. So let's see how many times I refill my, my glass. I know you're supposed to drink it out of those little, little sake cups, but who's got time for that crap, really? <laughs> All right, without further ado, the first, uh, these are in no particular order. Perhaps the weirdest ones are the ones that regular followers of my channel already know about me. I have kind of grouped them at the end, which may be a bit anticlimactic, but they are perhaps the weirdest. But otherwise, there's no particular order here. The first strange bookish fact about me is that I never organize my books on my shelves. It's completely random my whole life and I will never change it. I don't even like putting two books by the same author side by side on the shelf. Why? I don't know. Other than that I really enjoy hunting for books in my library. Because I, the more I do that, uh, it's just a joyous process. It takes time, but it's time well spent. And the longer I live in one particular place, the more I get a feel for where things are. So, for example, I'm going to be filming an Adam of Memento Mori's new tag right after I finish filming this so there won't be a costume change boys and girls and pulling the books off the shelf it was pretty painless because those books you know I know where the, I knew where they were but no there's no non-fiction fiction alphabet alphabetical nothing and that's the way I like it welcome to my world the second one is something I don't think I've ever talked about on book two and I wonder how unique this is. I've never heard anybody else talk about it either. I am not a particularly visual person, but when it comes to book covers and book spines, I have an uncanny ability, or at least I used to, to recognize at a mere glimpse of a fragment of a cover or spine, I will recognize the book if I've seen it, you know, a few times before. It doesn't have to be a book that I owned or whatever, but as long as I've seen it in the bookstore or wherever, I can recognize it as a at a glance. Now, now that I live in Japan, I, I don't have a chance to test that ability to see if it's wane it has waned over the years because people don't aren't walking around carrying English books all that much. But you know, when I lived the first fifty years or forty four years of my life in in Canada, I just couldn't believe how amazing that ability was, but how can I get paid for it? But please, comment. Do you have this? Like, just a, a little bit, like I almost want to make a, I think someday I, if I have, I'm going to make time to design a giveaway video where I present you with little slivers of of famous and not so famous books and uh, the, the winner will be the one who can identify the book the most number of books all right moving on I, I think I'm going to reorganize my list and put number five up to number three because it goes so well with what I just talked about recognizing book covers so the third strange bookish fact about me is in Japan 99.9 percent .9 of people who read read books have paper wrappers which completely cover the cover and the spine and Japanese book covers 
I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example up here so you know what I'm talking about. And the strange bookish fact about me is that even though I don't read Japanese and I wouldn't get much out of seeing what people were reading, the fact, the mere fact of those Japanese book covers enrages me. I hate it so much. Why would you cover up the book and deny me the privilege of seeing gawking and seeing what everybody's reading? And even when I go to the English language bookstore, Kinokinia, they still always ask me, do I want my books covers wrapped? It's like, no, hello, what? that's ridiculous, that's crazy! <sighs> Not being able to see what other people are reading when they are reading in public enrages me. <laughs> so now I'm going to get mixed up, but I think this is now the fourth strange bookish fact about me since I mixed up the order here and that is that I it's like pulling teeth to get me to read another book by an author whose book I have not enjoyed in the past the reason I think this is so strange is most of the time when I read a book by an author and I really like it or I love it and then I read another book by the same author whether it's earlier published earlier in their literary career or later most of the time I don't like it. So the logic of that should be that the chances of me liking another book by an author whose book I previously read and didn't like, there's probably a really good chance that I will like it. But I, I rarely will, will read another book. Once I read a bad book by an author, I don't usually go back and try anything else by them. You got one chance with Sean the Book Maniac. So, if I'm, if I'm counting accurately, the fifth strange bookish fact about me is that I am really sensitive to the font in a book, and I question whether my dislike of a particular font will make me dislike the book that I'm reading. I haven't tested it, I haven't done any uh, in-depth research, but I think that a f the font can put me off the book. Uh, I certainly play around with fonts in my e-reading, e and I have started to admit to myself that once I change the font into a better font, the book suddenly gets better. Okay, moving on. <laughs> you all think I'm too weird. <laughs> and the sixth bookish fact about me, and I don't think I'm alone in this, but I think this is one of the... It's just interesting, because uh, I think there's a lot of you out there who will uh, relate to this. When I'm reading in public, or especially listening to audiobooks in public, because I'm in more, um, a wider variety of places when I'm listening to audiobooks than I am when I'm reading, but when I read or listen to a powerful scene, or something that really gets my attention in the book, in the audiobook, I think I my memory of that passage in the book is triggered every time I revisit that place. So I can remember exactly where I was not when I read certain passages, but I think this is especially with audiobooks when I listen to certain powerful passages like a moving conclusion or anything that really captures my interest. And especially if it's a place that I walk to or walk through or walk by, the memory of that passage is triggered. Like, I can remember... I can remember where I was, not only because it, it's a generic place, it's on the train in Tokyo, but I can remember which stop I was in and which side of the train I was sitting in and the fact that the train was not moving, it was still waiting to before it departed. When I listened to the ending to both Emma Donahue's Room and Monica Wood's The Million Dollar Boy. It was different places, but I remember where I was and which side of the train I was sitting on, all that stuff, just and uh, other places that I walk. If I uh, had a 
had a powerful moment with my audiobook. I think of that moment every time I walk by. Uh, the rest of these, I think a lot of you aren't going to be surprised, but they are really strange bookish facts about me. So number seven is that, for me, the most powerful way to experience a work of literature is to be doing it on audio with an audio narrator that I connect with, that really resonates with me, that pulls me deeper into the experience. And that's a whole other video because that doesn't happen very often. But when it's that kind of magical audio narration, the optimal way I know how to experience a literary text is listen to the audio and read the book at the same time. Not alternating between them, but doing both in tandem for the entire book. And there are so many examples of this, both of the Court Cromwell novels by Hilary Mantel, Erin Daddy Roy's novel, the title is just gone out of my head, but that she narrated herself. Right now, Michelle Obama's memoir, but there's many, many examples. The uh, audiobook of Elizabeth McKenzie's The Portable Veblen Mini. But that is the optimal way for me to experience a book. Number eight, this will not be a surprise to anyone. I will bail on a book at the drop of a hat. And I have talked about this at length on my channel over the year and a half, or whatever it is, that I have been on BookTube. So all I will say now is that for me, continuing to read a book that you are not enjoying is like eating pizza that tastes like crap and making yourself sick. That's my metaphor, and that's how I live my life. I think I've bailed on more than 70 books thus far in 2018, and it's only December 16th. The ninth strange bookish fact about me is, in terms of the books that I buy and the books that I read, and this is getting more and more pronounced, I gravitate towards and am most interested in the obscure books rather than the books that everybody else is talking about. So even, you know, there's a whole bunch of genres that I'm not interested in, but within the genre that is the only one that's really worth my time as a reader, which is literary fiction, I gravitate towards uh, things that are not on prize lists, things that nobody else is talking about, uh, books that are out of print, and so on, and so on. That, to me, it's, I've been thinking about this as I've been preparing for this tag, and it kind of reminds me of how I was with music when I was, when I was young. I didn't like pop music or rock music or anything, and I didn't start listening to any of that crap. It's, I don't think it's crap now, but <laughs> it felt like I, that was my judgment as a precocious 10-year-old or 12-year-old. I didn't like any of it, and I, the first music I remember listening to and loving was Scott Joplin as a 12 year old and uh, you know I, I just like to be different so and the, the people that uh, are here for this channel and appreciate what it is I'm seem to be doing uh, resp uh, like to find out about the weird books within the literary fiction that I'm finding and I'm reading and, and enjoying and so I, I'm gonna keep going with that because that's just where I find myself I I'm usually disappointed by books that are on prize list or whatever. Not always. I mean, they uh, a, a stopped clock is right twice a day, right? But I uh, am much more likely to fall in love with something that's out of print or is only in print in India or something that nobody else is talking about. And that's just part of my personality. I'm an odd duck. What can I say? And number 10... I haven't talked about this recently, and I haven't talked about it at length, and I'm looking at the time, I'm not going to talk about it at length here, but I will talk about it for a couple minutes, which is, I absolutely loathe, and am ideologically, as a reader, I am ideologically opposed to myths and fairy tales, and especially their retellings within literary fiction. I think it's bogus, garbage, junk. I hate it, and I will not read that crap.
Are you, did you turn off the video? Are you still here? I'm so alone with this. Uh, Mark Nash has made a couple comments that he doesn't like myth retellings in fiction. I'd love to have an extended conversation with him about this, or any of you. But I just think myths and fairy tales are stupid. I mean, they're, I personally don't like them. Fine. But I also think they're not relevant. They're, well... They have a historical value, but they they were superseded by literary fiction, by, by f the novel, for a reason. And to me, they feel too much like Bible shit, old religious garbage. I just get them out of my fiction. I hate them! And there's another part that's a little bit more reasonable. I, I might sound a little bit more reasonable when I say this next point before I sign off, which is, I just think it's pretentious and snobbish that in order for me to enjoy your novel, I have to be familiar with some other canonical myth? Tell me your own original story. If my knowledge of what I have read, whether that's a piece of Japanese manga or a novel published 20 years ago, or some ancient myth... That might enrich my reading, but if I need to be familiar with some stupid freaking Greek myth in order to get what you're going on about in your novel, you have failed. Ah, <sighs> didn't that sound more reasonable? <laughs> I know this is a thing. This is a thing that, just like all of my weird things about reading, I like to poke at them. you got to give me credit. So this year I'm committed to doing a little bit of reading exploration about this. Why is this such a thing for me? And can, will I shift? For example, this year I have shifted. I have broken my complex about nonfiction because I had a wonderful nonfiction November and I think I've, that's, I've moved past that. Is this something I need to move past? Or is this me grasping onto the truth which I need to evangelize and convince all of you people? Okay, well, I think we've established that that is definitely the weird, the strangest bookish fact about me. What do you think? So, Britta, this was an absolutely wonderful tag. Thank you for making it. It's Like I say, it's really spreading. And I'm going to tag, I'm not sure it's because it's spreading so far and wide. I'm not sure who has been tagged. But I wanted to make sure Doris of Aldi Books got a chance to do this because I would love to see what she does what, what she would do with it uh, and anybody who's watching this video should do it Britta made it into an open tag I would love to see what just one reader might do with it I don't know if he's been tagged and I would say uh, cousin of always doing but again open to anybody please do it it's such an interesting video to make and an interesting tag to watch so please do it thanks for watching Thank you.